get started. Well, we want to welcome everybody. Uh, we are so honored uh, that um, we are going to be with you because we know how valuable everybody's time is. Um, we are here to talk about uh, why the first 10 pages of your script could be the most important pages of your career. Hi, I'm Suzanne Herrera McCullough. And I'm Bob McCullough. Suzanne and I are both members of, of the Writers Guild, longstanding members, uh, with more than 300 produced film and television credits. Uh, we've sold projects in many formats, everything from individual episodes for networks, cable and syndication, to original pilots and Bibles for series. And we've written Bibles and long-running series for online streamers. And every one of those scripts has started with the blank page, right? And we ask ourselves, how should we start? For years, writers have come to us for our honest reaction to their scripts, which eventually led us to building an online platform for giving them meaningful feedback to help take their scripts to the professional level. And it all started with the Santa Barbara International Screenplay Awards. That's a quarterly competition, and we have some great prizes there. Whether it's a full screenplay or a TV script or a script for a short film, every word of every page is read, analyzed, and scored based upon the specific criteria used throughout the TV and movie industries. So what we discovered with the contest is it is very, it's very easy to determine if a script is really any good just by reading the first dozen or so pages. And that's when Suzanne came up with the idea for the Wiki Screenplay Contest. So at the Wiki, you get various quick feedback on the major elements of a script by submitting just the first 10 pages of a script. So you might be wondering, how can anyone decide whether or not a script is any good just by reading the first 10 pages? Well, Everybody asks that question, right? right? Well, in the, in the real world, in the professional marketplace, that's exactly what happens. You see, the first mm -hmm. 10 pages of a script need to answer several specific questions to keep the reader's attention. You know, for many years, that used to be the industry secret, the first 10 pages, either they hooked you or they didn't. Now it's pretty common knowledge. So keep in mind the fact that agents, managers, producers, and studio development execs have a lot of scripts to read. I mean, they have a ton, especially with the explosion of the internet. So, give, so if you give them any excuse to set your script aside, they can move on to the next one and they will, trust me. Exactly. And there's, it's an impatient world out there. You know, as the saying goes, you only have one chance to make a first impression. Well, the same is true about your script. First impressions are everything. So let's briefly talk about what your first 10 pages need to show the reader. Uh, first, the reader needs to quickly understand what kind of a movie or TV show this is. You your first page should establish the tone. Is it a comedy, a horror film, an action thriller, or a sci-fi? The tone is your, is your writing. The tone of your writing needs to reflect the kind of story you're telling, and that tone needs to be fairly consistent. So one of the ways to do that is to write a very tight, succinct log line. That's practically an art unto itself, and we've discussed that earlier in a prior webinar. Uh, and we may present that again fairly shortly because everybody has that problem. We got such great turnout. Yeah, everybody has the it, log lines are very, very difficult to write properly. And the reason is your log line is really the tent pole of your script. It's sort of the home base uh, that you can always go back to when you start writing your scenes and dialogue. But once you have your genre and your tone in mind, which we discussed a second ago, then you need to start kind of building the hook. You have to develop something that catches the reader's attention and keeps it. So that's where your title, which is one of my favorite parts, your title sometimes can be a critical element. After all, it's the first words a reader encounters. It sets the tone and gives some indication of where the story might go. Uh, this isn't true for every title, but for most of them. So it's pretty obvious that like the movie like the Titanic isn't going to be a comedy, right? Uh, that particular title is is practically the whole movie. Yeah, I mean, Titanic historically was a story, so using that title pretty well encapsulated things. But so in the case of Titanic, you know, the movie opens very quickly with an introduction to our protagonist. We have a very clear indication that this is going to be a love story. It's just, if you think about it, it's really just a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. So the intention of that film was apparent very early, and it remained consistent throughout 
all the action that followed. We know we knew very early on that Titanic was going to be about how Jack would move heaven and earth to get together with Rose. Right. We've only seen it 40 times right. in our house. Good, good movie. Right. The brilliance of that script is that the co-protagonist roles, the two roles, they were star vehicles that would attract name actors. And that's what attracted the financing that was necessary to make the movie. So keep in mind, your first 10 pages should clearly establish a protagonist whom an actor would want to portray. Without talent, interested in a script is just, it's just a script, it's not a movie. Right, a lot of good scripts running around, but they don't have stars attached or even you know journeyman actors. So that's really key to getting things made. So, so far we've got two major elements to look for in the first 10 pages. Uh, the writing tone, consistent with the movie's genre, and the introduction of a protagonist who has a clear agenda to follow. So now let's talk about making the first best first impression uh, with the craft of writing the script. Okay, so first you have to make sure your script is written in industry standard formatting. One of the best ways to achieve this is uh, using screenwriting software. Now, uh, we know it's not cheap, but without it, you'll be guessing about margins, line spacing, capitalization, and other basic stuff. So it's worth the purchase if you can get it. For sure, for sure. And we won't go into those details here, but if you need help in this department, I've actually got a new book coming out next month that deals specifically with formatting issues. It was a very small book. It's the third installment of what I like to call the Stop Screwing Around and Write series. Uh, these are little books that lay out in very concise step-by-step -step detail what it takes to write a marketable script. So I think you can find those books and you can take a peek at them. You know, they, they should give you sample pages. Uh, on Amazon, if you just uh, Google search, stop screwing around, it should pop up. The bottom line is your script has to look and feel professional the moment somebody picks it up. Remember people in the industry are, they're constantly reading scripts and, if, and you don't want to give them any reason to stop reading your script. That means you need to use the correct font. Believe it or not, that's important. Eliminate any typos and write with perfect grammar. And there's a lot of programs that can help you with that. Sure. The key to all of that, of course, is proofreading carefully. We've actually seen great storylines go nowhere because of poor spelling and sloppy formatting. Yeah, that's kind of sad. You know, proofreading is hard, but it's absolutely essential. So your first 10 pages, come to think of it, they actually start with the cover page. You only need three things on your cover page, the title of your script, your name, and your contact information. Just your email address and or a phone number are enough. Don't put a WGA, WGA registration number uh, or a copyright warning on the cover. I know everyone is so proud when they get that, but it's seen as just unprofessional. Most of the professional scripts um, in the industry, even from professional writers, they do not have those on the script. Right, so the other thing is don't fill your opening pages with long blocks of stage directions or detailed descriptions of action. Nobody wants to read long paragraphs of, of anything. You know, we, we all remember what our high school history textbooks were like, right? Hard to read. So you wanna work uh, to develop a lot of white space on your initial pages. White space is a good thing in your opening pages because it means that, that that's an indication to the reader just at a glance that you've got things happening, your characters are front and center and they're talking to each other. One of those characters should be your protagonist. This is a, a person who's going to have to carry the ball for the rest of the story. So make sure we care about the character as early on as possible, like in the first 10 pages. Right. So that means, obviously, I think, something has to happen as soon as possible. You have to get the reader into the protagonist's problems. So we'll follow them as they struggle to deal with these issues moving forward. And by this time, within 10 pages, we need to be fully engaged with your hero, your protagonist, and then, and as well as the overall premise of the story that follows. So when we say something needs to happen in the early pages, that doesn't mean car chases or two characters just right. talking about whatever. These early pages are where you want your dialogue as concise and to the point as possible. Remember, you're writing for a visual medium. So write visually. Right. It's not easy to do. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. Writing visually, though, doesn't mean you pepper the scenes with camera directions or acting cues. Those are the obvious signs you're trying to be the director 
and not just the writer? Um, writing a script, whether it's for a feature film or TV show or for a short film, is not like any other kind of writing. It's very unique. Scripts are not written for the general reader who enjoys the occasional novel or short story. Scripts are written for a very specific and uniquely demanding audience, which expects a high degree of specific professionalism. Right. This isn't the general public who's going to be reading your script. There are people in the industry. We're f and keeping that in mind, we're firm believers that everybody needs good feedback. And one of the best ways to get it is to find knowledgeable people you trust and respect and get them to read your script. An even better way is to enter a reputable screenplay contest that's run by industry professionals. That's why one of the best places to start is at the Wiki Screenplay Contest. It's the original online script competition where you only need to submit the first 10 pages of your script and where you will indeed get fast feedback from experienced industry professionals. We don't use any uh, unpaid interns or film school students. Uh, these are all professionals that look at stuff at the Wiki. I guess we're a little biased, uh, yeah. but uh, we try very hard to give professional um, uh, readings and advice. Um, so at the Wiki, uh, you'll never have to wait three months or six months or even longer to find out if any of your scripts is on track. And when you enter uh, at the feedback level, you're guaranteed to get the kind of help that will quickly bring your script up to professional standards. Right, we can't emphasize enough how important it is to enter the right screenplay competitions. There are a lot of script contests out yeah. there now. And uh, you just wanna be sure that any contest you enter has genuine industry professionals. You know, people with credits, uh, people who are WGA writers and producers on the, on the judges roster of the contest. And that the feedback they provide is guaranteed to actually help bring your work up to the professional level. They should be giving you free samples just so you can see what the kind of work they provide. I remember one of the um, reasons why we started our screenplay contest is we had a nephew uh, a few years ago and uh, said to us, he was an upcoming writer, said to us, uh, which screenplay writing contest should I uh, join and, or enter? And uh, we said, well, um, you know, who's running it? Right. Who's judging it? Who's reading it? And he really uh, did some research and he really said, I, I don't know. So we looked and we looked into this ourselves and we realized that not many people were emphasizing who was reading and uh, there were no professionals behind it. So we thought we had so much experience and right. advice that we decided to start that. Well, the thing is, a lot of screenplay contests don't even identify who's running the organization or, or who's actually doing the reading. Those are critical things you want to find out before you'd be sending your script out and sending people money to right. take a look at them. So it, it doesn't have to be ours. It can be somebody else's that you want to enter, but you want to do your, your research. So Make, make sure they're legit. Right. Sure. Uh, so we're starting, and we're also starting to see a number of so-called contests popping up that rate scripts based on computer algorithms and or some point by point scoring program, which takes the human element of the whole process. And remember, screenwriting is an art and an art that affects our audience on a human level. Right. So exactly. the point system, it, it's just you want does people not work. to read your scripts, not some computer, right? Right. I mean, there are there's there are a couple of new contests out there. They literally scan pages into a computer system and that gives you a judgment on your script. Uh, I, I don't believe that that's even credible. So producers and directors, they do not go by that at yeah, all. Yeah, exactly. They're real people and they want to get some feeling out of your page. So just beware. So I'm, I see we have, um, and I want to encourage everybody, uh, if you have questions, just, uh, I think we have a Q and A window open over here. Let's see if we can get that. Uh, yeah, show us, if you have questions, just type them into the chat window. And uh, we'll get to those. I see we have quite a number of questions here. Uh, but first, I want to remind everybody, we have a, a, a kind of an important webinar coming up on Friday. Um, it's called Choosing Your Path, Writing for Movies or TV, right? I mean, a lot of people don't really understand the different mindsets and strategies between success as either a screenwriter for movies or as a writer for television. You know, it's not always easy uh, or obvious choice, but it can be the most important one that you'll make uh, as a writer. 
Right, they're very different tracks and uh, we'll be discussing that on Friday. So I encourage everybody to check that out. We'll be sending an email out to everybody who's here uh, letting you know about that. So, uh, well, and, 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 and before we go to the questions, I, I just want to emphasize um, that Bob and I um, have had so much experience in um, screenwriting, uh, producing, directing, co-producing, even a little acting. Um, and uh, so we know a lot about the industry and we just really enjoy sharing this with you. And so on a monthly basis, uh, we give webinars and we really try to throw a free one in every month as well. Um, so everyone can get the benefit um, of our knowledge. So right. I guess we should go yeah. to the questions. Yeah, go ahead. Um, let's see the first one here. Well, uh, Stephanie sent us a, a, an email question. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, and she asked, uh, what's it like to write for a limited run TV series? Well, in reality, all TV series are limited runs. Nothing stays on the air forever. But I think Stephanie is referring to these kind of short seasons. Well, it used to be um, a few years back. Uh, you used to get orders for 24 episodes. And um, that was great because uh, nine months out of the year, you would be shooting uh, a show and you'd get paid for it. Uh, but these days, uh, most of them are like 10 or 12 episode orders. So um, that's a lot harder uh, to make a living. Uh, so you need to um, start looking for the next writing gig. When we used to write for 24 episodes, uh, they, you pretty much signed a contract that said you wouldn't be writing for any other show. So um, it just depends, um, but you just need to get your foot in the door and get that job no matter what it is. Right, right. Uh, let's see, Todd asks, do you guys have any resources to see great first 10 pages? You know, actually, we have we have some samples. Um, and I think we should probably share that. With we'll them. put those up on the wiki on the wiki screenplay contest uh, website. Mm -hmm. We'll put some sample pages up for what we think are terrific 10 page openers. Uh, I must say everything we've sold has basically been based on the early pages, right? I mean, we, we it was we that have, pitch. We no. have samples of yeah. our own scripts we can show you because uh, we have we were, worked very hard to refine that yeah. process. So, uh, so Todd, give us a couple of days and we'll get our uh, our web developer uh, to put some stuff up on the website that shows you what sample 10 pages might really look like. And uh, let's see, <clears throat> Ernie wants to know if I've submitted a script previously that was a quarter finalist in the wiki contest. Congratulations. Yeah. You know, You're on your way. It, it, I know that winning is the objective, but trust me, with the volume of work that comes in, uh, placing as a quarter finalist is is not, it's a feather in your cap. You for should sure. be very proud Absolutely. of your script. And uh, so Ernie wants to know, he's done rewrites and improvements, may he submit again. Uh, here's the deal, Ernie. Uh, our reader analysts are pretty highly paid and they get paid for everything they look at. So uh, you would need to just re-enter it as a fresh entry. Uh, and we, pr we promise you a completely fresh perspective. It'll be a different person uh, giving you the analysis. Uh, so there, there is a limit. If you get us the rewrite or revisions prior to your script mm -hmm. being read, that's one thing. But once it's been, we've done the work on it, uh, you'll need to re-enter as a separate entry. So Maxine says, hi, Maxine, roughly what ratio of description to dialogue should you have in the first 10 pages? That's a good question. A very good question. Uh, you should have enough. Well, it, it's not a ratio thing. It's the appearance of it on the page. Your, your stage directions, your action sequences, and your slug lines, I don't believe should run more than four lines ever. Uh, if you can't say it within four lines, you're trying to say too much. Uh, so I think a balance, I mean, 50-50 basically, uh, but uh, here's a dirty, yeah. dirty little secret about studio readers. They only read what's down the middle of the page, and that's the dialogue. Once they know what, what setting is, is it exterior, interior, is it a forest, a desert, a mansion, they look right to the characters and they start listening to the characters by reading the dialogue first. Um, okay, uh, we have another one from, um, hopefully I'm pronouncing this name right, 
Satoko. Uh -huh. um, in the pitch, is it possible to include multiple alternative endings? I think that's a bad idea. That's a bad that's idea. A bad idea. Yeah. You, you have to have the conviction of your story and the denouement, the resolution has to be something that's very satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a yeah. You have to have, you have to come across with a lot of passion. Right. So if you're not sure about your ending, then they're not going to be sure about you. Now, so uh, the hard part is if you have multiple endings, which you love, you have to pick one. Right. right yeah. Right. Now that doesn't mean after you sell the script, the, the producer, producer's not going to have his own ending. Okay? Oh, it'll change. It'll, it'll change. change. Right, but right. you got to go in there really sure. Yeah. Don't say, don't, don't give people multiple choice options. Yeah. It's that your was a story. Good it's your story. Good question. Right, right. I don't, I, I don't think we've ever had that question. Well, sometimes it's hard to decide how should I end yeah. this thing, you know? Well, you need to know that you're the right. writer. Or if you give it to your mother or your uncle or your brother and they say, well, you know, the ending is a little, you, and you say, well, I have another ending. Don't go there. You pick your ending, stand behind it. Well, James asked a fairly common question. We've actually had others here. Uh, he says his first 10 pages is a flashback. Is that acceptable? It's very common now, yeah. actually. Uh, it's a great way to uh, create what they call a cold open. In other words, you throw us right into the middle of somebody's story and it gets the ball rolling very quickly. We don't even need to know where we are or what's going on or who these people are, but it's a compelling action sequence. Yeah. We see some great character moments. Um, it's, gosh, I, the number of movies where that happens. It's very today, common right now. Yeah, because I think uh, television affected that a lot. Uh, TV, you know, they have to grab you before the first commercial break for sure, or you'll be changing the channel. You'll pick that remote up and look around. Uh, so television has tended to influence feature films now in that. Well, they, the all, all movie actors are appearing on TV now. Right. That's right, changed right. a big deal. And the audience attention span has has shrunken over the last decade or so. Mm -hmm. So uh, flashbacks and cold opens are, I think, uh, a very widely used mm -hmm. tool. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next question is, um, uh, you talk about the first 10 pages, but what if I have too many characters to introduce that quickly? Ooh, good question. Well, pick a couple. Yeah. You can only have, there are only a limited number of protagonists you can have, even in a movie like Titanic. Like Titanic. Has a lot of characters. Had a lot of characters going in it, but right away, you know who the real, who the hero is, who's going to carry the story. So you can have a lot of characters, but you do want to focus on your protagonist, even in a movie like Saving Private Ryan. Mm -hmm. It starts out with the entire right. U.S. Army landing on the beaches of Normandy, but right away we meet Tom Hanks, and we know he's yeah. going to carry the story and he, forward. He's the focal point. Right, yeah. right. Uh, Randolph, this is a long question, Randolph. I'm working on a historical biopic miniseries that will run for a limited number of episodes with a definite conclusion. How would you suggest addressing the first 10 pages? The storyline would change over the course of the series, as we follow the principal character from boyhood through his entire life. Okay, that's, that is an epic, but your epic still needs to start in a very compelling fashion right. that draws the reader into the characters and the plight of the character who's going to carry you through all the episodes. You were so, really good about doing stuff like that when you did a few of your miniseries and stuff, you know, when you just pitched it. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. adapted a couple of novels that had 50 characters in them. And I picked like two people to carry the ball. One who uh -huh. was an antagonist who was kind of against everything. Mm -hmm. And the other was the beautiful lady who was going to be right. the heroine. So, so basically what, what Bob got is he got a book and they said to him, Bob, we want this as script and we want to make it into a series. They hadn't even read the book, but it was a bestseller. And he had to make it into a series. So, um, uh, and then he had to go in and pitch what the series was going to be about, even though the book was already written. But you focus on a character, yeah. focus on somebody that you want to live with for a while, Randolph. Otherwise, you're just going to be jumping all over the place. And within the first 10 pages, you should be able to identify them. And your reader is going to want to know that character quickly as well. If you draw too broad of a canvas, uh, you'll have nothing but aggravation much later on. Um, also, uh, towards the end um, of the 10 pager um, or of your pitch, uh, you can give some suggestions on how the series is going to go with this particular character. Right, right. You know? So we only have a couple of minutes left here. Um, uh, this is from Joan. She says, I got feedback from a contest saying my script is too long. 
it's 135 pages, but I see a lot of scripts that are over 120 pages. Well, Joan, we see a lot of scripts that are 135 pages too, and those generally are too long for a spec script. Uh, if your script reads at a minute per page, which it should, that translates into a minute of screen time. Movies that are over two hours long just are more expensive to produce. And mm -hmm. as an unknown spec writer, you want to be selling stuff that people are willing to invest in. Uh, they're not going to trust you with a three-hour epic. I can guarantee you that. So I would suggest anything over 120 pages is, in fact, too long. And I would shoot for more like between 95 and 110. Um, so we've got a question from Danny. What about the theme, the tone? Is it important to show it in the first 10 pages? Thanks. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We need to know, is it a comedy? Is it an action piece? Is it a suspense thriller? And that should all be inherent, not only in what happens in the first mm -hmm. 10 pages, but in the writing of those first 10 pages. You know, you can, you can write like Edgar Allan Poe yeah. and make us get the creeps right away with two sentences or you can write in a very lighthearted comedic fashion. So your tone is critical and you need to be consistent throughout the script with that tone. Um, next question is, what is the best way to start a drama genre screenplay? Any tips? Well, I would start with fade in and-, <laughs> and He's and, the funny guy. And, very, and establish very quickly the setting. Where are we? When is it? And who are we looking at right away? Uh, and then let the story evolve from the character. It all comes out of character. What's the problem your character has? And we need to know that right away. Or you, in, along with what Bob is saying, you can start uh, uh, the first scene with a dramatic beginning. And I'm sure everyone has seen films like that. Um, you know, somebody falling out, out of an airplane or <laughs> right. somebody being murdered or uh, somebody uh, physically getting abused. Or, I mean, it could, you know, it has to, really get you in the first reading i mean sure. the first 10 pages for sure um oh this aaron wants to know i know the story i want to write about but i've never written an actual screenplay should i take a course to learn how what a great question uh aaron as you probably have seen there are now hundreds if not thousands of film schools out there and screenwriting courses available my personal opinion is take one course and that's all and get what you can from that course and then teach yourself the craft of screenwriting by reading screenplays. As many screenplays as you can. That's the best possible teacher. Read produced screenplays mm -hmm. and that will tell you what the market is buying and it will tell you who the good writers right. are, what draws you in in those first right. 10 pages. Okay, one more question. Well, I was, I was just going to add, you know, you can get screenplays online. Uh, they never used to be so available, but you can pretty much get any screenplay and read it. And I, I, the advice I would give you is uh, read every type of screenplay, but mostly the genre that you want to write. And right. you can see how they write. Right. Okay, we have a couple more questions here. We have a lot more. Um, you said something about not starting with two characters, just talking. But I've seen a lot of movies that start with just people just two people talking and my script is like that for the first four pages is that a problem i think it is unless you're aaron sorkin or quentin tarantino or mm -hmm. uh william goldman has passed on but it, it, unless you're one of those really brilliant dialogue technicians yeah. we need to see something happening my dinner with andre wouldn't sell today i promise you um yeah, but... and, and to be honest that film was a really good film but in terms of uh, making any money for the studios, uh, I'm right. sure they're still working on it now. And unless you're somebody already well known, there's no one. No one would touch that um, unless somebody very powerful was behind yeah, think, it. Remember, these are yeah. movies. Things have to move. I mean, uh, yeah. Social Network was a huge exception. Uh, it was great acting, though. great acting, and and it, great stars. And Aaron Sorkin, Aaron Sorkin wrote the dialogue. So. Right. That kind of drew you in. But even that movie, trust me, after the first 40 seconds of that dialogue, it's like, okay, we get it. The guy's a jerk and we're going to have to live with this guy for the next hour and a half. So I'd be very careful about overwriting dialogue in the initial 10 pages. We want some stuff to be happening. One more question. It's getting late here. Okay. I think my screenplay could also be a good TV series. What's the best way to sell it? 
Well, that's a great question. And it's something everybody, everybody wants to know that. The, the, the answer to that is fairly protracted. And with that in mind, I would encourage you to check out uh, Friday, this coming Friday's webinar. We're going to be dealing with exactly that issue. You have a script. You don't know whether it should be a TV script or a movie. Uh, those are big, big decisions to make because they affect your career for years to come. Uh, and uh, so, so that's a great question. Uh, we don't really don't have time to answer that here, but the fact that you have written anything at all is fabulous. It's, it's wonderful because, because so many people have ideas and nobody writes them. Right, right. And we just want to also, before we end this, we want to encourage everyone to keep writing. Um, there are so many more shows on, on TV these days and um, there's more jobs, of course, then that attracts more writers, right. but uh, there's never been so many uh, writing opportunities for the industry and for people. So we encourage everyone not to give up, right. keep writing, keep trying, All keep right. reading, keep learning, okay. and we'll see you at the movies. Bye. Bye.